Roy de Carava was a prominent African-American photographer who portrayed the everyday people of Harlem and the civil rights movement through his work and was particularly well known for his portraits of jazz musicians. He came to be known as a key figure in the world of American post-war photography. De Carava was born to a single Jamaican mother named Alfreda in the year of 1919. His father's name was Andrew de Carava. From a very young age, de Carava expressed his artistic abilities while playing with his friends and doing activities like drawing on the streets with chalk. He worked many odd jobs throughout his youth, including being a shoe shiner, a newspaper salesman, and an ice hauler. After transferring with one of his friends into an all-white school, he studied art history, which inspired him to continue into that field of work. After finishing his basic schooling in Harlem, Roy went on to study at the Cooper Union School of Art from 1938 to 1940, but left after only two years. He became frustrated with the racism coming from his white classmates and decided to move back to a community he was more comfortable with. He then went on to the Harlem Community Art Center, where he was a student there from 1940 to 1942. He also attended the George Washington Carver Art School from 1944 to 1945. His original reason for attending art school was to pursue his interest in painting. However, he began to love photography more and started to focus on that instead. At this time, photography was seen as more of a form of documentation than as art, so de Carava had his work cut out for him, trying to make a name for himself in this circle of the art world. He began using a camera to capture moments of inspiration to later use in his paintings, until he realized that the photography itself was much more interesting to him. De Carava quickly began his career by showing his work in some very well-known places. The first major photographic series he completed was of his hometown in Harlem. Through this, he tried to portray the true thoughts and feelings of the Negroes living there, which he thought could only be conveyed by a Negro himself. His first solo exhibition was at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City in 1950, and after it was over, the museum bought several of his prints to keep for their own collection. In 1952, de Carava was the first African-American photographer to win the Guggenheim Fellowship. This is an opportunity that goes to, quote, individuals who have already demonstrated exceptional capacity and exceptional creative ability in the arts. In his application for the fellowship, he wrote that he had hoped to show the, quote, unknown and unnamed people of our country. The Guggenheim obviously saw de Carava's potential and understood his deeply emotional photographs capturing the everyday people of the time. This was an exceptionally good thing for de Carava to win because it gave him the time, money, and resources to be able to go back to his home of Harlem and be able to complete his photographic goals. In the early years of his career, de Carava also collaborated with writer Langston Hughes to make a book, The Sweet Fly Paper of Life, where he combined his photographs with Hughes' narratives. He also started his own gallery in the mid-1950s called A Photographer's Gallery, with the hopes of trying to get people to take the art of photography more seriously and treat it with a higher regard than they were. After establishing a name for himself in the photography world, de Carava quit his real job of being a commercial illustrator in 1958, and just a few years later began the Kemwange Workshop, which was meant to get more African-American photographers in Harlem to come together. His work often captured deeply contrasting scenes showing dark shadows compared with light faces or lightly dressed humans. His musical portraits portrayed these same themes as well. De Carava's work really demonstrated his fight back against racial discrimination. From being one of two black people in his high school to being singled out in his art school, de Carava pulled from his own experiences and combined it with other people's stories to make his work that much stronger. 
He photographed subjects like the Garment District laborers, civil rights protests in the streets, freedom marchers in Washington, D.C., and other significant movements of mid-19th century African-American history. His subjects have almost always stayed close to home, which has kept his emotional connections to them. De Carava is also known for his famous jazz musician portraits of prominent players such as Louis Armstrong, John Coltrane, Duke Ellington, and Billie Holiday. These were put on display in Harlem's Studio Museum in 1983, as well as published in The Sound I Saw, Improvisation on a Jazz Theme, book that De Carava himself put together in the 60s, but waited many decades before publishing. From his selection of photographs from galleries, books, and his famous jazz portraits, each of De Carava's works are powerful and make a statement in their own way. In a comment about the photograph of a tired man going up subway stairs, De Carava explains that as he was waiting to take it, he realized he had run out of film and thought he was going to miss the shot. However, the man, the subject, stopped at the bottom of the stairs for a momentary rest before climbing up, giving De Carava time to reload his camera and catch the man as he walked by just seconds later. He called it a miracle. This photograph of a young boy sitting on the steps of his brownstone apartment and the little boy reading a comic in the windowsill are perfect examples of what De Carava was trying to express. His use of natural, unfiltered light made these images dark, yet full of detail and contrast. De Carava's goal was to create a physical form of the simplistic, beautiful things he saw through his own eyes, and he was able to share this with his audiences. Overall, Roy De Carava's work was a significant contribution to the African American Civil Rights Movement. He helped turn photography into a respectable form of art through capturing images of famous musicians and starting his own photographic gallery. By being the first African-American man to win the Guggenheim Fellowship, he helped to build the reputation of black artists in the overall culture of Harlem. MoMA organized a traveling show of his works for the purpose of introducing it to a new generation around 1996. And finally, De Carava received the National Medal of Arts in 2006 because of his many outstanding accomplishments spanning across his entire lifetime. De Carava died on October 27, 2009. I thought that De Carava did a very good job portraying what he had hoped to, the true people of Harlem. The level of respect he gained for his personal work and how much he advanced the world of photographic art in general was admirable. On a smaller scale compared to the large awards and fellowships De Carava was known for winning, I thought one of his most impactful accomplishments was his creation of the photography workshops that he established in his own community. He focused his whole life on his fellow African American artists and community members in general and it is a shame he is not more well known for all that he has achieved.